What's going on everybody, I'm Patrick from Powlax and in this video we're gonna be talking all about cradling. This is the Powlax Backyard where I'll be teaching techniques and how to fix common mistakes by showing you ways to improve your game at home. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of the Powlax members whose generous contributions make these videos possible. We believe that the best way to improve and grow the lacrosse landscape is by educating players, parents, and coaches with the information they need to be successful so they can enjoy the sport. That's why all of the Powlax videos are free to watch anytime, anywhere. If you enjoy the Powlax content and want to help contribute to their creation, consider becoming a member at Powlax.com. For just $5 a month, you gain access to the entire Powlax playbook, a series of PDFs that accompany all the Powlax videos. Once again, thank you to all of the Powlax members. Now let's get back to the video. So to define cradling, cradling is any movement that we make with our stick to ensure that the ball stays in the pocket of the stick. Now to give a base example of how cradling is actually going to work, if I'm running full speed, I'm gonna be driving the stick forward, right? But so as the stick comes forward, if I leave the face of the stick open, it's gonna fall, it's gonna come out. Now to keep it in the stick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my fingers, my wrist, and my elbow, and as the stick is driven forward, I'm gonna curl the stick so the pocket stays in front of the ball. Now as I come back, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna open up my wrist and my fingers so that the pocket, once again, stays in front of the momentum of the ball. Now I can do this action in a variety of ways. We can cradle here, I can cradle across my body, upside down, I can cradle behind my head, I can cradle basically anywhere I want to in as many ways as I need to. I can cradle between my legs, now now to go over all of the different ways we want to cradle, I'm going to cover one way that I dislike that coaches teach it a lot, and then we're going to cover three other ways to cradle that fulfill specific needs within the game. When a player originally gets handed a lacrosse stick, they all do the same thing. They're going to hold their stick at their waist like this, because when they hold it like this, gravity keeps the ball in the pocket. Now, Coaches like to use this way of holding the stick to teach cradling first because it also gives young kids another reference point, right? They're gonna see them hold the stick like this and they're going to have them curl their hand up like this. I really dislike this because it teaches players that they need to be moving their stick a lot in order to keep the ball in the stick and I totally disagree. The key to cradling is that we wanna keep the ball in the stick, we wanna keep the stick away from defensemen. And the more I move my stick, the more opportunities I'm gonna give a defenseman to check my stick. So when I teach the first way to cradle, which is our horizontal cradle like this, all we're going to do is a subtle rock forward, subtle rock back, and my fingers are gonna curl, open, curl, open. This is it, this is as much of a horizontal cradle as I need. Now once we have our little horizontal cradle in place, we're gonna add in our next component of the game, which is the defenseman. It's not only important that our cradle keeps the ball in our stick, it's important that we keep the stick away from defenseman. And when we think about this, we wanna have our body in between the defenseman and the stick and ball because the defenseman's gonna try and dislodge it and they're basically gonna cause trouble while we're trying to score goals against them. Now. With my horizontal cradle, this can work in a variety of ways, especially if I am away from the defenseman. But once I get close, I'm gonna to need to push the stick away and shield with my elbow, my shoulders, like this. Now I'm still in my horizontal cradle, but now the stick is away from the defenseman. Now once we have our horizontal cradle away, one of the issues with this cradle is that my stick is really far away from my body. So a long stick defenseman who's throwing checks can actually throw a good check where the stick actually comes around to hit the stick. So in order to not allow them to do that and to shield the stick a little more with my body, we're gonna learn a vertical cradle. So we're still gonna have our hands away, but now we're going to pull our top hand up to our pec muscle, and we're gonna use our elbow and our shoulders to really defend the stick. So if you'll notice, if I stand sideways like this and my hands way out here, and as I move, you can think about curling your stick around me to hit my stick. Now, if I bring my stick in and I keep it closer to my body, it's much harder for you to get around my body and to the stick, and I can really shield the stick quite a bit more. Now, when we are cradling vertically, like if I'm cradling vertically here, oftentimes my hands are really far apart and it's kind of hard to get my elbow up. Now, I can always choke up to make it a little bit easier as I'm pushing in. The key is that I wanna be moving and the butt of my stick needs to stay protected by my hips and my elbow. 
One of the coaching cues that I like to give younger players is that when we are cradling vertically, we always wanna make sure that the ball and the face of the stick is towards us. In the event that I'm using that vertical two-handed cradle, I always have the option of letting go with my bottom hand so that my arm can become another obstacle that the defenseman can't really throw their stick around. Now the key is I'm not allowed to push off on the defenseman because that's a ward. And when we do it, we turn the ball over to the other team. But so if I can keep my hand up like this or like this, it's just going to be another way that I can protect my stick. Now, if I am cradling one-handed, notice it's the same small tight cradle close to my body. I'm shielding with my back shoulder, my front shoulder, my arm. And the key to this cradle is where our top hand sits. So before we even do this cradle, we are gonna wanna find the balance point in the stick. So if I put my finger right here, I've got an even amount of weight on the bottom of the stick as I do to the top of the stick with the ball. And so if I grab there, when I spin the stick to cradle, now because both the top and bottom weigh the same, the stick is gonna stay even in my hands. Now, if I move my hand a bit down, now when I try to cradle, there's more weight in the top of the head, and so the stick's gonna get all wonky and kinda go out of control, which we don't want because it's going to make it easier for the defense to make a check, and we never really wanna be out of control anyway. Now, those four cradles are great for when we're maneuvering around the field. There's actually a lot of other cradles we can do, like a face dodge where we cradle on the opposite side of our body, we can cradle upside down, there's tons different ways we can protect the stick from the defenseman. But now we have another whole range of cradles we're going to want to incorporate, which is our passer's cradle and our shooter's cradle. And so when we're going to transition from defending our stick to passing and shooting, we're going to want to slide our top hand down the stick to the middle where we talked about putting tape in the how to hold your stick video. Now, as we do that, we're going to want our top hand to be a forearm's length away from the butt of the stick. And now we're just going to grab onto the bottom of the stick with our bottom hand. Now, when we go to pass, our stick is kind of up our collarbone. Our top hand is shoulder height. And then our bottom hand is going to have to come across our body. Now, when we think about how we're going to cradle here, I like to cradle by twisting my bottom hand back and forth so that my top hand kind of just becomes a guide. When I'm here, my top hand's now gonna push forward when I go to pass, but the key is that I'm not doing a really big motion because I can't pass right now, can't pass right now. But now if I have a small little cradle, I can pass basically any time that I would want. Now, our shooter's cradle is the same type of cradle. I'm gonna control with my bottom hand, kind of guide with my top hand, but now in order to generate power, I'm gonna put my hands in towards my body and then back so that the butt of my stick is still facing my target and then it's the same cradle. I'm rotating with my bottom hand and then my top hand is a guide. Now with those six basic cradles, you can basically control the ball in any way you would want to on a lacrosse field. Now, we haven't even really talked about switching hands yet, but anything that you're gonna do with your strong hand, you're gonna also wanna do with your off hand. Now we're gonna cover some ways you can work on this skill at home. Now in order to drill this in your backyard or at home, I recommend just learning how to switch from one cradle to another. So I'm horizontal cradle here, horizontal away, up to pass, out to shoot vertical, horizontal away, right? One-handed vertical, up to pass, out to shoot. And as you learn how to transition from one to the next, a lot of them are gonna give you some problems. Like one of the ones that I really had to practice on quite a bit was a one-handed vertical cradle here and then go to pass because as you move up to a passer's cradle, now, I don't have the bottom hand on the stick to drive the stick up so I can be in the right position to pass. And so as I'm here, I actually ended up having to really find and train my hand to grab and slide effectively. So have fun incorporating all of these different cradles. Try a bunch of different new ones, you know, cradle down here, cradle between your legs, cradle behind your head. All of those things are going to help you just learn to make the stick an extension of your body. I'll see you guys here in the next video. I hope this video has helped you get a better understanding of the game and how to practice at home. If you liked it, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the Palax YouTube channel, and follow Palax on social media. To watch and learn more, support the Palax mission, and download the PDFs that accompany all of the Palax videos, head to palax.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.